let's take a look at modular arithmetic. So the definition of modular arithmetic tells us that if a and b are integers and m is a positive integer, then a is congruent to b mod m if and only if m divides a minus b. So before we actually look at this um, definition and actually do some practice with it, I want to make sure we're very clear on the concept of modular arithmetic or mod m. So let's look at just mod 4 since that's what our first example will deal with. And mod 4, remember when we were talking about mods, we're talking about remainders. We're very interested in what the remainder is. So if I take something and I divide it by 4, I could possibly get a remainder of 0, or I could get a remainder of 1, I could get a remainder of 2, or I could get a remainder of 3. Now if I got a remainder of 4, that would really be the same thing as a remainder of 0, because 4 would be divisible by 4 exactly would means a remainder of 0. So these are really my only options because we always like to look at the the smallest values. So now if I'm looking at mod 4 and looking at my number line I've drawn, this would be 0, 1, 2, 3 just as we normally would think so on a number line. But with mod 4, the value of 4, 4 divided by 4, is a nice even number that has a remainder of 0. And 5 divided by 4 has a remainder of 1. And 6 divided by 4 has a remainder of 2. And similarly, we could go in the opposite direction where negative 1 would actually be negative 4 divided by 4 with a remainder of 3. And then 2, and then 1, and then 0, etc. So we can see what the pattern is, is basically just 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So what we're looking for in our first example asks us, is 2 congruent to 6 in the world of mod 4? So looking at mod 4, 2 and 6, if you'll notice, both are 2, which means if I take 2 divided by 4 or 6 divided by 4, my remainder is um, 2, exactly the same. So that's good. So that means, yes, they are equivalent. Now what I want to do instead is look at my definition. Now my definition says I can determine that without making a number line and counting everything out by saying, is the difference between these two values divisible by 4? And that is what we're asking here. So we're saying, does 4 divide 2 minus 6? Or 6 minus 2 would give us the same result. So does 4 divide negative 4? And 4 does divide negative 4. And therefore, we know that, yes, 2 is congruent to 6. So we're not saying that 2 is divisible by 4 or that 6 is divisible by 4. but that these two are equivalent because their the differences in their remainders is divisible by 4. So let's look at our next one. 24 is 24 congruent to 14 mod 6. So again we're asking does 6 divide 24 minus 14? Does 6 divide 10? And in this case 6 does not divide 10 evenly and therefore, no, these are not equivalent. Again, we could draw out a number line and we could see that visually, but hopefully you get the basic idea of modular arithmetic. We've just looked at the definition of modular arithmetic and I want to look at a theorem that really follows from that. And I feel like this theorem is pretty straightforward. Essentially, it's saying all the same things we had before, a being integers, m is a positive integer, then a is congruent to b mod m if and only if, and then a mod m is equal to b mod m. So really all we're saying is if the remainders are equal to one another, then they are congruent. And that's what we talked about when we looked at our last slide. Um, but let's kind of look at it in terms of the mathematics. So I put the same two examples that we had on the last slide, and I just want to look at it in terms of when we looked at the division algorithm. 
So if I'm looking at 2, I'm saying, does 4 divide 2? And again, we know the way that we can write this. We're saying 4 times some number plus some number equals 2. That's what we want to look for. So in this case, 4 times 0 plus 2 does equal 2. And then if I were going to write that in terms of r, which is the remainder, the remainder is equal to 2 mod 4. So 2 mod 4. So notice what I'm building up to here. a mod m, I'm saying 2 is equal to 2 mod 4. Let's look at 6. So does 2 divide 6? Sorry. <laughs> Let me try that again. Does 4 divide 6? I got confused for a minute. And so again, the way that we would write that is 4 times some number plus some number using the definition of division. And in this case, we would say 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. And again, the remainder of 2 would be equal to 6 mod 4. And so notice what I've just shown you is that, yes, in fact, we already knew these were equivalent, but now I'm just showing you in another way that 2 is equal to 2 mod 4, 2 is equal to 6 mod 4, and therefore 2 mod 4 is equal to 6 mod 4, and therefore we can say, yes, this is true. Let's look at our other example. And again, we previously showed that this was not congruent. So let's take a look at how we might show that mathematically. So we're saying, does 6 divide 24? And if we take 6 divided by 24, we're saying 6 times some number plus some number is equal to uh, 24. In this case, 6 times 4 is 24 plus 0. So how would I write that? I would say that my remainder of 0 is equal to 24 mod 6. And now let's look at the other one. We have 14. So does 6 divide 14? And again, we're saying 6 times some number plus some other number. This one would be 6 times 2 is 12 plus 2 is 14, and notice here my remainder is 2. So 2 equals 14 mod 6. And obviously these values don't are not equal. Therefore, 24 mod 6 does not equal um, 14 mod 6. And therefore, we can say, again, that 24 is not congruent to 14 mod 6. So we've sort of skated around this a little bit, um, but I really want to sort of define it for us. We're going to look at um, congruence classes, which are really just equivalence classes. So these are the same as equivalence classes. And essentially, we're saying that let's use mod 3 as an example, just because it's easy and there's less writing. I know in mod 3 that my remainder could be 0, 1, or 2. And so for mod 3, I'm looking at an equivalence class for 0, and 1 for 1, and 1 for 2. And what I want to do is just look at what values would be inside of there. And so if I'm dividing by 3, I know values like negative 6 are divisible by 3, and negative 3 are divisible by 3, and 0, and 3, and 6, etc., etc., etc. So what I can see here is that these are all obviously divisible by 3. Now looking at my next one, this is saying which values, when I divide by 3, would give me a remainder of 1. So if I divided, say, negative 5, 
that would actually be negative 6 plus 1, so a remainder of 1. And then an answer of 2, an answer of, uh, oh, sorry, negative 2, an answer of positive 1, an answer of 4. So 4 divided by 3 would give me a remainder of 1, and we get the idea, and that goes on forever. And then, of course, if I look at negative, or the equivalence class for 2, then I'm looking at negative 4 and negative 1 and 2 and 5, etc., 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 and we get the idea. So a couple of things to understand with equivalence classes. First, if I took the union of all of these, then I should get the set of integers. Which makes sense. Basically, we're saying all of these, all of the integers are included in 0 and 1 and 2 equivalence class. The other thing I want to look at is going back to um, the way that we're writing our division algorithm before. So we were looking at A equals DQ plus R, and that's the way we were writing it before. So let's take a look at, say, 6. So 6 is equal to 3 times some number plus r. And in this case, they would be 3 times 2 plus a remainder of 0. Uh, let's look at 1. Um, I'll choose a number from 1. Let's look at, say, negative 2, just to be difficult. Negative 2 equals 3 times some number plus some number. And so if I took 3 times, in this case, negative 1, that would give me negative 3, and then I would have to then add 1 to get negative 2. And I could do that for any of the values inside that equivalence class. Um, and then if I look at, say, some value from 2, let's look at 5. So if I look at 5, that I'm saying 3 times some number plus some number, and 3 times 1 would be 3 plus 2 is 5. And what I want you to notice is that the 0 is the remainder, and that corresponds to the equivalence class. And of course, the quotient in this case, the Q, I'm sorry, the D, the divisor, is whatever our modulo is. So mod 3, we're obviously dividing by 3. So what we're leading up to here is to be able to actually do some calculations in modular arithmetic. But before we do that, I want to look at an extension of the um, modular arithmetic definition with you. Uh, just to make sure we sort of understand as we move forward, and I want to look at the proof with you. So again, let m be a, and this should say positive integer, I apologize. So let m be a positive integer. If a is congruent to b mod m, and c is congruent to d mod m, then a plus c is congruent to b plus d mod m, and a, plus, or a times c is equal to b times d mod m. So again, this is going to make sense because we're going to be looking at addition and multiplication in our upcoming lesson. But let's go ahead and look at a proof. So as we always do with proofs, we're going to lead a lot on definitions, etc. So I can say, since A is congruent to B mod M, and again, I'm just going to be using the definition, so A is congruent to B mod M, then I can say that B is equal to A plus, we'll say, KM, where K is some integer. Oh, I'm having trouble today. So where K is some integer. And similarly, since 
uh, C is congruent to D mod M, then I can do the exact same thing. I can say D is equal to C plus, uh, we'll say L M, where L, of course, is an integer. So essentially, I've just defined them using my um, division algorithm that I did before. So now let's look at the proofs. Looking at the first one, I'm looking at a plus C is congruent to B plus D mod M. So I can say that B plus D, I should have uh, outlined that in yellow to kind of keep everything straight. B plus D is equal to, and this is just substitution, A plus KM plus C plus LM. And then of course I'm going to do some simplification knowing that I want to end up looking kind of like this, which is of course um, what the division algorithm tells us. And so I can say this is A plus C plus KM plus LM, or even better, A plus C plus M K plus L. And now you can see that I'm looking at the exact same format um, of how we have written this before. So let's look at the other one. The other one says A times C equals B times D mod M. So again, I'm going to look at um, B times D which is equal to A plus KM, I'm sorry, yeah, C plus LM. So essentially I'm multiplying and then I'll FOIL that out. So I would get AC plus ALM plus KCM plus KLM squared which really what I want to look at is AC plus M and then whatever inside. So in this case it would be AL plus KC plus KLM. And again, because I'm able to write it in the correct format, then I have essentially proven that those are true. So now we're going to look at arithmetic mod M, and if you'll notice, this is exactly what we just proved um, prior to doing these examples. And so I'm looking at addition and at multiplication, which essentially says that if I'm going to add two values mod M, then I'm going to add the values as I normally do and then determine the mod of those values. So for addition, again, A plus M in mod M, same thing for multiplication. If I'm taking A times B mod M, then I'm just going to take A times B and then determine the mod of that. So let's take a look at an example so this makes sense to us. If I'm looking at 4 plus 5 and this is mod 3, this tells me to take 4 plus 5 mod 3. So 4 plus 5 is 9 and 9 mod 3. And remember, mod is just what is the remainder when you divide. So if I divide 9 by 3, my remainder would be 0. So my solution for that is 0. Let's look at multiplication. 4 times 5 mod 3. And again, 4 times 5 would give me 4 times 5 mod 3. I just forgot to write it out. 4 times 5 would give me 20 mod 3. And remember, I'm looking at if I took 20 divided by 3, what would be my remainder? And my remainder would be 2.